In this video, I'll be explaining what the Unidrive M sequencer is, showing you where to access the sequencer functions in menu 6, and I'll also be showing you how the sequencer is configured by default. I'll be demonstrating how to change the sequencer settings so that the drive will operate using three wire control. So if you're ready, let's get started. Today, I'm working with the Unidrive M400. However, all of the drives in the Unidrive M family utilize what is called a sequencer. The Unidrive M sequencer is located in menu 6. Because it's easier to understand what the sequencer does by seeing a picture of it, here is a picture of the block diagram for menu 6 taken from MConnect software. As you can see by the diagram, the sequencer serves as an interface between the digital inputs on the drive and the control functions for the drive, such as run forward and run reverse. Sequencer functions, or destinations, are typically assigned to the drive's digital input terminals. For example, the Unidrive M400 that I'm using today has the sequencer function run forward assigned as a destination for digital input number 3. Sequencer destinations like Run Forward can also be configured to be latched using menu 6, parameter number 40. Latching means that once the source for the sequencer destination becomes true, like a digital input coming on, the sequencer function that is associated with the digital input will remain active even if the source changes state. It's important to understand how the sequencer is configured before wiring the drive. The sequencer configuration will determine which sequencer functions are assigned to which digital inputs on the drive. The sequencer configuration will change depending upon how the drive is configured. The drive configuration parameter is located in menu 0, parameter number 5. Next, let's have a look at a couple of examples. Here's a screenshot showing the options for menu 0, parameter 5, drive configuration. The default setting for the US is AV. That means the drive is configured to receive its speed reference from an analog voltage source, such as a potentiometer. The diagram is taken from the Unidrive M400 quick start guide that is shipped in the box along with every drive. It shows how the control terminal should be wired to operate the drive using the default setting of AV for menu 0, parameter 5. I'll now change the setting for this parameter to preset. In preset mode, the drive will get its speed reference from one of eight user programmable preset speeds. Here is the diagram for how the sequencer functions have changed to accommodate this drive configuration. Notice how the function of terminal 14 is now changed as compared to when the drive was in AV mode. That's why it's important to have a knowledge of the relationship between menu 0, parameter 5, and the drive sequencer. With menu 0, parameter 5 at its default setting of AV, the drive sequencer is configured to be in what is referred to as two-wire control mode. It's called two-wire control because there is one wire to run the motor forward and a second wire to run the motor in reverse. In this mode, the drive sequencer functions are not latched. That means that whenever either the run forward or the run reverse terminals are deactivated, the motor will come to a stop. An alternative to this mode is to change the sequencer settings so that rather than having the motor come to a stop when the run signal is removed, the driver will require a stop function to be programmed to a control terminal instead. This control mode is referred to as three-wire control. One wire for forward, one wire for reverse, and a third to stop. Let's have a look at how to configure this mode using MConnect software. I have MConnect software open, and I'm online with the Unidrive M400. 
Even though I'm working with the Unidrive M400 in this video, the procedure I'm about to demonstrate is applicable to any of our Unidrive M family of drives. To begin, I need to reassign one of the control terminals on the drive to become the stop input. So let's have a look at menu 8 to see how the sequencer functions are assigned. First, I'll begin by seeing which control terminals are wired to switches. To do that, I'll observe menu 8, parameters 2 through 7. See how they change state as I turn my switches on and off? Input 3 is my run forward, and input 4 is my run reverse, so I'll leave those two alone. Input 7 is wired to a switch, so I'll use that one as my stop switch. Next, let's have a look at the sequencer in menu 6 to see what the parameter number is for the stop function. The sequencer functions begin with parameter number 30. You'll notice the parameter number 39 is labeled as not stop. This is the function I'd like to assign to digital input number 7. It's called not stop because it uses inverted logic. In other words, when digital input number 7 is turned on, the drive will be in its not stopped or running condition. When I turn input 7 off, the motor will come to a stop and the drive will be in its stopped state. Let's go back to menu 8 now and assign the destination not stop to digital input 7. To do that, I'll double click on menu 8, parameter 27, and assign it to have the destination menu 6, parameter 39, or not stop. Next, we'll need to enable sequencer latching so that when I remove the run forward or run reverse signals from the control terminals, the motor will continue to run until I wish to stop it using digital input 7 that we've just configured. To enable sequencer latching, I'll go back into menu 6 and have a look at parameter number 40. This is the sequencer latching. I'll turn this parameter on to enable the latching function. The last and most important thing I'll need to do is to perform a drive reset. Anytime you change either a sequencer parameter in menu 6 or a digital I.O. parameter in menu 8, you need to perform a reset on the drive or the changes won't take effect. I'll use the reset button in the control ribbon in MConnect software to do that. Let's test this now to see how it works. To begin, I'll need to turn on digital input 7 to put the drive into its not stopped state. Next, I'll operate the motor by turning on the run forward input. I'll turn off the run input to show that now that we've enabled sequencer latching, the motor continues to run until I turn the not stop input off. Doing so brings my motor to a stop. Now that I know my changes are correct, I'll be sure to save the parameters in the drive so that the changes we've made are permanent. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative, and if you have any questions, I can be reached at the email shown here. Please refer to the training section of our website for more information about our training courses and to see our current training schedule.